Hey guys, this is the Tuninator, and this is another high level Heroes 5 Tribes of the East duel match. This is between uh, Attila on the left is Inferno, and Elven on the right is Dungeon, and this marks uh, uh, the first thing starting to use replays from the season. One of the duels tournament now, so the map may be, the armies may be a bit different, for, but for the most part, it's the same. So, anyways, looking at the armies, we can see uh, the Inferno hero, as you would expect, is very big on attack 18 attack, 5 defense, 5 spell power, 8 knowledge, so overall, uh, his. Magical ability isn't going to measure up anywhere close to the dungeon heroes, but might uh, do better might-wise. And if we look at his units, we see that massive amount of uh, might skills here. For you can see, uh, well, uh, there's probably been some investment into uh, maybe one or two non-combat skills. You can see that three, six, uh, like f at least fourteen or fifteen uh, skill points have been spent on skills that uh, actively impact. Uh, the creatures on the battlefield. So we're gonna have a very might heavy army here against what could be a might heavy or it could be a magic heavy dungeon. Uh Elvin plays both of those very well, so let's take a look. You can see eighteen attacks, actually an equal amount of attack to the Inferno Hero, the two defense, so a bit less defense, twenty four spell power, so it's five times as much and nine knowledge. But the knowledge is completely irrelevant. You see Elvin still has two hundred and thirty five mana, so Elvin's got way more mana. Uh, way, way better hero stats overall. It's a little short uh, in defense, but the massive spell power and uh, massive amount of mana more than makes up for it. And looking at his units, we see a grand total of zero combat skills. So this is going to be a very magic heavy dungeon against an inferno which is prepared for a magic heavy dungeon, which is probably just looking to go all out on offensive, but uh, may still be hampered by their hero's inferior stats. So, anyways, let's get the battle underway here. I'm curious as to see whether or not we'll see some gaining. So I think it was going a little slow for a second there. You can slow it on the replay, I must have done that by accident. Yep, so we are going to see gain. Looks we'll like Attila's anticipating some destructive magic, so he wants, uh... He wants those, uh... Yeah, those initial numbers. Some fairly decent damage from that meteor shower there. For taking out some numbers in the higher And then Black Dragons with the big attack on the uh, lower tier units, but not losing any return, so looks like Dungeon's going to be the rest of the shield. Let's whip around the camera. Oh, and I see I overwrought Matriarchs. Oh, well, maybe I spoke too soon, and both sides are kind of trying to charge across here. The Hydra's just sitting behind a rock. They'll be well positioned to take on the uh, gated uh, Nightmares when they come in, though. I'm sorry, those are hell charges that here, but yeah, hell stallions, right? Oh, is that a frenzy? Yep. Oh, that's gonna be painful. Or I guess sorry, I guess uh, missed the angle, so it did not hit the stalkers. Still, oh, and puppets. So we are seeing some actually pretty decent control here, but uh, Elven's mana pool is much deeper than Attila, so he can afford that last. Well, he's taking some pretty heavy damage here. So they can leap out of the action here into kind of the fray up over here. Oh, they're going to be gated. All right. So, oh, just beating on those stacks again, but uh, he's taking some significant damage as well. Oh, and a nice lucky strike there from the uh, pit spawns, killing half the black dragon. So that was pretty big. Although the uh, their stats are about equal on the hero, the expert attack and uh, expert attack advanced defense is it. Will really be making a big difference in the hand-to-hand uh, -hand damage there. So Elvin's gonna need to go big with his spells to make up for the uh, amount of damage he's gonna take in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And uh, looks like he has done just that, killing almost all the arch devils, destroying the poison. But the dragons losing another tail, so they're just getting wailed on by these spawns. The camera back. Yeah, it looks like uh, once these gates start coming, Elvin's going to be a bit of a numbers disparity, which uh, with this kind of dungeon build, you can still even up in seconds with really powerful spells, but nonetheless, could be a problem. As, I believe, uh, two of his stacks, the Minotaurs and the Hydras, are still not under his control. But there isn't a whole ton of Inferno troops left either. The gated ones don't matter, but we can effectively ignore them and just go for the kill. And there are quite a few, uh... The Risk Raiders was like an interesting choice by the part. I actually didn't notice that. I should have remarked that. Risk Raiders are not something you see every day. 
It's dying up, oh, Minotaur's dying, and the actual stack of health dying is dying as well. Dragon's going down, so. Multiple stacks dying for both sides here. An interesting choice of Brisk Raiders is uh, they're normally kind of not really look too well upon, but Elvin does enjoy experimenting with units that are not uh, basically the traditional uh, pick. And uh, when you play a lot of duels, you really have room to kind of mess around. So, like with most games, there's no one build that you have to do all the time, like a particular set of units if you want to win. If you're a good player, you can make pretty much anything work. And that's not to say Brisk Raiders are completely terrible, but they're not, they're not very good, at least in my But, uh, some more lucky hits here. I'm sorry, we never checked the morale in the luck, so it's three morale, five luck on them. Inferno and two luck, or two morale on them. So yeah, we come out with the, the might skills, the big luck, and uh, big morale is really been paying off for Attila here, but this is very interesting. Uh, both sides are kind of running out of steam here. That was going out. There's not many uh, actual Inferno stuff on the battlefield, but there's not many, many dungeon troops, period. The Hydras are going to be a bit of a brick wall to get through, but uh, they're still. Yep, they're still. Uh, I puppeted it, I think. Frenzy, sorry, I couldn't tell, but they are dead. Or the uh, Brisk Raiders are dead, rather. So are most of the dungeon troops, so. Sorry, actually, in all this, I missed which spawn stack was the actual one, but it looks like it's just them and the succubi left on the battlefield. And when they go down, that is going to be game over. Oh, no, another lucky stack, straight from the health down. They've been putting on a ton of damage. So basically, we're going to see if. Uh, yep, well, I'm, I'm imagining Elf is just going to be able to nuke down the last two done, or Inferno stacks. So, uh, very close game, but I don't see the Hydra's going down quite fast enough, although you can see just the. Uh, Big might advantage of the Inferno with those skills, putting out huge damage in hand to hand combat. But uh, this is likely going to be the end with the death of those sucky guys. Yep, and uh, Chain Lightning for good measure. <laughs> well played. Yeah, that's the game. Another very uh, close and well fought one by both sides, as always. It's very interesting to see what happens when a really might oriented hero uh, squares off against pretty much completely magic focused heroes. The two completely different ends of the scales. Like, yeah, you can see one in the hands of competent players. They're both able to handle the other pretty well, which just, I think, speaks nicely to game balance. So in any case, hope you enjoyed. Look forward to more in the fu near future. This is the Tuninator, and I'll see you all later.